Alrighty, it's 10.30, I'm up abnormally late. Yeah, very late. Got the wood heater cranking. It's fucking been raining hail and everything. Oh man, Saturday, went to work. I mean, Saturday today, but went to work. And, uh, <laughs> fucking hell, I was driving there, I was in a daze. It work half the day in a day. It was only a five hour day. And um Yeah. Fucking driving home and I'm thinking, bloody hell I am stuffed. Go back, ate some lunch, you know. Started to go to bed by about two thirty and I slept for three hours to set an alarm to get up to go to this old uh Auntie's seventieth birthday. Oh man. So anyway, I'm I'm there, and thank God I got this new phone plan, and I got you know decent heap of data on my phone now, you know because uh, I had to go out and watch TM, yeah, TM, and uh, because the conversation was sort of like, well, I'll let Bill Burr explain. Want to go to brunch? <laughs> you want to go to brunch on Sunday? Miss Hyde, you're like, fucking no! You can't say that, you gotta keep her happy, right? So what do you do? You agree? Yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $52 for eggs? Now you think it's... But anyway, the conversation was a bit more like this. Then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs, you know, like, is that pesto? <laughs> is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. <laughs> pesto. Yeah, that was probably uh, the sort of level of conversation. And, of course, uh, the mind of uh, a link doesn't sort of tolerate that sort of fucking yuppie shit. Uh, <laughs> so I had to go out and play on my phone for a little bit. You know, you look at everyone, oh, it's no good, you know, people in the world, they socialise, and oh, fuck me. When you're socialising with some blooming out of touch yuppies, like, what the hell hope you got to, <laughs> except to do exactly what they do. Run away with your bloody phone and watch some YouTube. <laughs> Fucking hell. Forty year olds there. Dressed in some shit that I think I could probably have done better myself. Uh sewing up something than uh what she was working oh blowy. She likes hanging out with these hipsters and, and I don't know where she gets this stuff from, but uh she can wear some funny stuff when <laughs> when the need arises, but I know it's it's nothing other than the fact that she's hanging around with these hipster boyfriends. Anyway, there she is, you know, another one of these boyfriends. Here we go again. You meet these guys and you're there, you know, talking to them and you're, oh, here you go, mate, this, that, and you're talking away. And in the back of your mind the whole time you're thinking, gee, this guy's a good guy, but this is the first and last time I'm going to see him because that's exactly what happens. You know it's coming. You know what is coming? Him going. She never keep these guys for any more than six months at a time. And they're fucking out again. You know, last time she's here when she's, oh, it's so hard to find men in Melbourne, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck off. There's like 1.4 million males in the city. How fucking hard can it be? Fucking hell, you walk past 200 of them going to work this morning. And that was just this one morning out of five days that you worked this week. Fucking hell. How can you have trouble finding them? They're everywhere. Fucking hell. You know, you're looking at me right across the table, and I'm not that hillbilly that I'm going to marry my cousin, but, but you know, like, don't tell me there's no men, because I am fucking one. You know, what are you going to go do next? You're going to walk up to a fucking anteater and say, oh, there's no anteaters out there. And the anteater's looking at you going, what are you talking about? I am a fucking anteater. Fucking hell. You know, I don't know. It's the same mentality, though, that can open up a fucking... What's his name? Open up a fucking um, wardrobe. 
full of clothes. Oh, I've got nothing to wear. What are you fucking talking about? There's like fucking 75 dresses in there, and that's just the dresses. Never mind the pants, the shirts, the fucking everything else. How the fuck can you not feel... Just, what are you saying? You know, you got people over in, well, as close as the Solomon Islands that have got fucking jack shit worth of bugger all to wear. What they do wear is damn near threadbed. Threadbed, the elastic's failed on most of it. Not on some of it. Not on none of it, like your stuff, but on most of it, you know, and, well, I've got nothing to wear, it's the same, well, there's no men out there, well, what the fuck, you know, God, blimey, it's just like a fucking, they're in their own bubble of bullshit, but, I mean, this poor cunt will be out on his ass six months later, guaranteed, guaranteed. And I was looking at the uh, 25-year-old, the one that's taking advice off off this, uh, you know, 40-year-old. I was sitting there, you know, looking at her, and she, you know, she's the fucking hottest girl in the whole family. No question, she's got the best genes of a lot of us, you know, and no boyfriend with her, but the thing is she's taken advice from the, the fucking 40-year-old, you know. She cycled through a couple of good guys, but uh, she doesn't quite cycle through them as fast. Um, but, you know, same one that wins days breathing in my ear at night. Oh, well, talking about having kids, you know. Oh, so you can't handle the boyfriend breathing in your ear at night. How about a baby screaming in your ear five times a night for the first three months of its life because its stomach is only big enough to hold, you know, enough food for a few hours before it needs to be fed again, you know? Uh, my boyfriend wasn't ready for kids. He was too young. He's 24. What are you talking about? You're fucking 25. Maybe he wasn't ready for kids because he's living with your fucking parents. You know, honest to God, I feel, you know, I'd, I'd make an, an embarrassment of myself, but there's times where you feel like taking her aside and saying, look, love, why don't you take some man advice off my sister, who is married with three kids, not off some fucking failure who cycles through guys every six months, you know? You know? Tell her that I, every time I meet these guys, I think this is the first and also the last time I'm going to see you, because I know she cycles through the guys. You know, and instead of taking any advice off my sister, never ask my sister about it, she asks as a 40-year-old, and the 43-year-old, who quite frankly has given up. And, uh, you know, to be honest, the 43-year-old's got bipolar disorder. Uh, and she's very social, but I've got a feeling that uh, they sort of, members of the family noticed she had a bit of emotional troubles at, at times. And it turns out she's got bipolar. Um, you know, but she gave up. She's not going to waste some guy's time going out with him for six months before finding some fucking bullshit picky excuse before dumping him again. All these guys have got good jobs, you know, they've got money rolling in. They make fucking, they're making like double what I'm making in most cases, you know, but eh, find some excuse to fucking, you know, another one down the, the fucking drain. Another one bites the dust, you know. Oh man, fuck this yuppie culture. Blooming hipsters. <laughs> you know, but it's not that. It, it's society, and I wouldn't necessarily blame George Soros because apparently they faced a similar thing in the last days of the Roman Empire. It's a society that is too wealthy, too comfortable, and Everything is provided for them. They get fussy and fussy and fussy because the standard of living is so high and things are too fucking easy that they don't have to build a life because it's almost just rolled out to them. But inevitably, that all ends. And a society will go through a collapse and face desperately hard times, in which case... Women once again need men. Any sort of fucking handouts and, and you know, 
free magical entitlement mentality that comes along and including feminism and all this sort of stuff it all flushes out of the system and the system renews itself after an epic collapse and uh, huge shortages and huge worries and all this shit disappears as people find it hard to even get along after a society collapses they find it hard to even feed themselves and then once again the family unit forms as a woman needs a man for protection and uh, they decide that uh, a symbiotic relationship of codependency is the best way to move forward for both of them and uh, also to pass on their genes and essentially spread their legacy on further uh, you know and, and have a legacy to pass on and this is one of the chronic things you know nobody's thinking about their legacy nobody's thinking about what they'll be remembered for nobody's thinking about 150 years down the track when someone looks you up on a family tree or even 50 years down the track all they're thinking about is ah uh, my phone's not good enough somebody else has got a, a better one uh. going out to all these social functions and and you know trying to get the fucking the, the, the $52 egg ah uh, it's a pesto ah uh, it's a pesto oh it's asparagus I thought it was pesto in your egg ah uh. you know too busy playing fake rich there's a difference between real rich and fake rich um, and uh, <laughs> I'm not talking about people like El Bass uh, I'm more talking about <sighs> the bourgeois your middle class upper middle class who want to be seen to have everything and be affluent those who spend all their money trying to look affluent versus those who actually have fucking big money and I know a number of millionaires let's count one two three four five I suppose six but he's dead um, there's a number there's probably a few more of it that one's just off the top of my head we, we know we got about fucking six right there off the top of my head um, and and some of the friends of those guys you know are fucking really wealthy in fact the software millionaire I know he's um, he had a mate who was a promoter who basically was involved in the entertainment industry he used to bring bands to Australia rent out massive venues to you know host a band this guy was driving around the fucking Rolls Royce. Why? Because he's worth absolute millions, you know. And then you've got all these other idiots who are trying to work out a payment plan to make them look rich, <laughs> trying to show off wealth they don't have to people they don't like. You've heard that phrase before, and that's that's your fake rich versus my uncle's mate over here who uh, died. Well, probably only about a year after my uncle died, and he would have died probably 2011. Uh, you know who? Fucking hell! Like, oh yeah, there's another guy over the road there. I think he might be a millionaire as well, and he's a brother who's definitely a millionaire. There's another guy over the river that I sort of know. I know his sister more than I know him, but I I did visit him um, about nine months back or so, uh, probably a year ago. He's subdivided a lot of property. He's got commercial properties as well. And he's got a brother who I sort of know who's a bit of a dickhead, but he's got a major company that's got stores and shit everywhere. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, Dad's boss. Fuck me. The amount of millionaires I actually know. Oh, Chinese boss. Fuck me. I start cranking the numbers. It's like 10 or 11 millionaires I know. Um, Chinese boss would be the fucking richest of the lot, to be honest. He would be, actually, yeah. Yeah. Fucking William! <laughs> That's his English name, William. Um, yeah, but this is the thing, you know. Think about me, old uncle's mate over there. Fucking hell, the dude, he's got houses. He was fucking 
renting out. He's, he's like, you know, he's fucking commercial properties. He had a fucking gas station that he was renting out and the mechanics next door to the gas station. Um, and, yeah, I think he had the gas station. At least he had the mechanics next door to it and a couple of other houses and that. And then he, he sold blocks off that he subdivided and, oh, fuck. Yeah, he was a millionaire, no question about it. I remember that, but you never know, you never know. Because uh, he'd be there, he had, <laughs> he was the mayor of the fucking joint for a while, back in the early 90s, and he had a bung eye, so he's sitting there with a lazy eye, how hey, you going, mate? Fucking holes in his pants, this, that, the cunts worth fucking millions. You know, he would have been, oh, it's probably about three million or something, something like that, I don't know. Um, <laughs> dead giveaway was the fact they had several old Mercedes Benzes. Not old, old ones. They weren't too bad. They were sort of probably about 90, 93 models or something like that. But he had a few of them that were like all more or less identical. But there's at least two, I think it was three actually. Um, yeah, and he had like a truck that converted into a motorhome, like a commercial truck. Uh, that many fucking old cars, it was unbelievable. He's still driving these cars and they're just shit. And then, you know, they got this little house that honestly wasn't much bigger than my house here and much the same age. Uh, and, uh, two months got into it. Oh shit, gotta build another house. Well, he built a house. Fuck me! This joint was fucking huge! He spent quite a few thousand alone on, now you're not going to believe this one, a ducted wood heating system that you could throw logs into that were like fucking five foot long logs into the fire burner, like into the your firebox basically, like, like, you know, this thing right there, this firebox. But that's just a little one room wood heater. Uh, it's about a medium size heater. It's supposed to be used for a larger room, this one. But, but, um, and this guy here, you know, this is a whole house ducted system. Huge firebox. You, you, the fucking stuff he's thrown in is like five or six foot long. You know, heat the whole house. And fuck me. The size of the house. Holy smoke. It would have been like fucking seven or eight times the size of this joint. You know, it's, it's fucking massive. Uh, fairly substantial ass joint, but you know, and, and they just bang had the cash right there to buy it. It's like holy smoke, yeah. But yeah, you know that's the way it is with the true rich versus all these upper middle classes. They're just always running for this, you know, the next best thing. And, and uh, in a way, I believe that might be something to do with cycling through the boyfriends. You know, nothing's ever good enough. We all want a nice fandangle new thing. But they're not thinking about legacy. They're not thinking about long term. They're thinking about what's the trendy thing now. And after six months they want to change their cell phone and change their boyfriend as well. Nah. And quite honestly, they probably don't think of it as being much different. Not really. You know. But how are you going to have a legacy if you've got no kids and you spend everything you got. She should be outranking the fucking shit out of me financially. Like, she should be just fucking... She's a supervisor where she works. She's probably on fucking $1,600, $2,000. Not a month, but a fucking week. She hasn't saved any money for a house. She's been in this job for like fucking 17 years or something. Right? Earning big dollars all the time. Goes, flies, Japan, overseas, this, that, <clears throat> Doesn't even have money for a deposit. In fact, she hasn't had a car for the last 10 years, and she got one about six months ago. Property? Oh, no. <clears throat> nah. Here I am, fucking earning half the money, now that I'm working five days, having spent different times, like the piggery, in the last few months where I've only worked three days a week, and I'm fucking ready to invest in property, and she doesn't even have... A deposit down for a first house. I'm standing in my first house and looking at my second house. Fucking hell. I've been thinking about a number of things and how to talk to a few people. Um, 
I am not putting out of the realm of possibility that I may indeed marry a native girl, i.e. black girl. Um, thought about this a number of times and, and sort of passed it off as, oh, uh, well, they're not terribly intelligent, but, you know, you got to make compromises. You know, if you're going to get somewhere, sometimes you've got to compromise. And, uh, you know, there's been multiple times there, as I've said on the main channel, where, you know, I meet these girls and they just love the girls and I talk to them. There's a guy at work I don't usually work with, the Italian guy, but today I was working with him. Lo and behold, I never knew this. He come from around the same area, um, you know, further out in the States, that another one of my workmate comes from, the guy who's married the Vietnamese girl. Uh, you know, basically Swan Hill, it, it's sort of a further out area. Uh, up against the New South Wales border with a big river nearby, a lot of irrigated crops and stuff, a lot of fruit and stuff like that. Um, I think that's where he used to be doing all the fruit. Uh, and yeah, he said, oh, there's not many Aborigines, there's some, but not many. Well, lo and behold, the Italian guy also come from out there. His parents used to grow grapes and turn them into sultanas and some other crop I forget. Uh, but it's all, you know, food crops. Uh, and the long and short of it is that he said, yeah, there's plenty of abos up in that same area. In fact, his parents used to employ them to pick the grapes. But he said, the guys, is, oh, it's a bit of a laziness issue, and you get to about lunchtime, and they'd open beer, and that'd be it. You wouldn't get them working past lunch. And, uh, but he said, they're, they're not a problem. He said, that, as I thought, you know, the girls are as loyal as loyal, he said. They will stand by you, they will fucking die for you. He said they are that loyal that, you know, if they're going to take bullets for you, they'll fucking do it. They will die for you, these girls. But what I like about them most of all is they're so unmaterialistic. And as much as they might have a bit of laziness and as much as they might not always be the smartest girls, I think you've got to pass those compromises out to get a girl who isn't materialistic because I'm fucking sick of them. Here's one girl I'm not sick of, a little putty tats come through the, the, the cat's flap there. Um, yeah, so I think you've got to sort of make these compromises, you know. You know, these aren't the sort of girls you've got to go out and approach just to be snobbed, they're the sort of girls that approach you. Plus, they're not materialistic. Plus, they're as loyal as a fucking as a fucking ISIS fighter, honestly. And I think that might be the the way to go. And I'm going to be up in these areas looking at houses anyway, so I might just start trying the old stunt of leaving work on a Friday night and and going up to Fleabag Motel up there to, uh, you know, maybe hang around on a Saturday and Sunday and see what. Nice young women I meet. They ain't the prettiest in the world. That's another compromise. I really don't give a fuck because I'm not interested in prettiness. They do have a tendency to get a bit saggy and put on some weight. <sighs> Doesn't most girls after they've had a couple of kids, you know. You keep them off the sugar. Some of them keep fairly nice and trim, but I think you've just got to keep them off the sugar and you really need to keep them away from the alcohol and probably the cigarettes too, but... You know, this is the thing, like, I'm not going to come out with a list of 12 different things and pick, pick, pick and be digging at the bottom of the earth saying, Ah, she breathes in me ear when I'm in bed at night. Ah, she doesn't want kids while I'm living with her parents. Well, I'm not living with my parents, so that's not a fucking problem, is it? But I'm not going to whinge when she breathes in me ear at night. Because I'd be happy to have something else in the bed with me other than... This little mite. Isn't that right, buddy? Hmm? So anyway, that's just a uh, <laughs> bit of a talk on the, the fucking bourgeois theory of stuck-up yuppies. <laughs>